In a previous video, we looked at the careful linear algebraic construction of the tensor product of two vector spaces using something known as the free vector space on a certain set. And here I want to look at some mathematical applications of the tensor product. Namely, we can construct a ring of polynomials or an algebra of polynomials from or using the tensor product as well as some related ideas. Okay, before we jump into that though, let's recall like what came about out of that construction of the tensor product. So let's say we're given vector spaces V and W over a field K. We might fix the field to be the complex numbers later. We might leave it as just an arbitrary field K because it doesn't really hurt one way or the other. So the tensor product is defined to be as follows. I should say the tensor product of V with W. And so we read this as V tensor W. So it's the span of all objects of the form little v tensor little w, where little v is a vector from V and little w is a vector from W. And then it satisfies the following three rules. And these rules came about from endowing some relations onto the free vector space using some sort of quotient or something. And we endowed it with these rules because we wanted it to like make sense or behave the way we wanted to. Okay, so anyway, we've got the scalar multiple of V tensor W is the same thing as the scalar multiple C V tensored with W, which is also the same thing as V tensored with the scalar multiple of W by C. Then we've got also two distributive type rules. So if we've got V1 plus V2, so that lies in V tensor W, that's the same thing as V1 tensor W plus V2 tensor W. And then finally, V tensor W1, W2 is the same thing as V tensor W1 plus V tensor W2. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, I want to work towards the construction of something known as the tensor algebra, which is like maybe the main space that we can work with in order to perform um, simplifications to a polynomial algebra or some other algebras. So in order to do that, I need to define a little bit of notation. So let's say that we've got a vector space V over a field K and we've got N, which is a non-negative integer. So we'll define V and then upper tensor N to be the n-fold tensor product of V with itself. So this is V, tensor V, tensor V, all the way up tensor V. So we're tensoring a vector space with itself n times. So let's point that out. This is n times. Okay, nice. Well, what does it mean if we've got n equals zero? Well, we read n equals zero. So V tensored with itself zero times is just the ground field. So that means we can form an n-fold tensor product with any vector space V. Now we'll take the direct sum of all such n-fold tensor products and we'll call that the tensor algebra. So let's define the tensor algebra. So that's going to be defined like this. So I'll call it TV and that's going to be the direct sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of V tensored with itself n times or the n-fold tensor product of V like this. Okay, so now we can read this off as the ground field, which I'll write as K, direct sum with our vector space V, direct sum with V tensor V, direct sum dot dot dot. So as you can see, we're kind of putting all of these things together like this. So now let's look at a quick example. So let's say our vector space V is one dimensional and we give it a basis of X. So let's say we've got V is one dimensional. So let's say it's K times X or maybe the span of this vector X where we're thinking about this as the K span. So anyway, that's all multiples of this vector X. Okay, and then we'll also introduce a little bit more notation and that's this. So let's write the following X to the N to mean 
x tensor up to x n times. But now if we do that, we look at this tensor algebra of our vector space V, which is really just a tensor algebra of this one dimensional vector space, what we end up with is a polynomial algebra. So I'll put that this is isomorphic to the polynomial algebra with variable x. But we actually got lucky there and we got lucky because this was one dimensional. If this was not one dimensional, we would not get the polynomial algebra. Maybe we'll explain why that's the case on the next board. So far we've defined our tensor algebra to be the direct sum of the vector spaces which are defined by the n-fold tensor product of V where V is a fixed vector space. Then we also showed that if we had a one dimensional vector space with basis vector x, Introducing some notation, we were able to see that that was, or when we took the tensor algebra, that was isomorphic to the polynomial algebra with variable x and coefficients in k. And that really brings up the following question, and that would be maybe what about the following vector space? So what if we have v equals the span of x and y. So in other words, this is everything of the form ax plus by, where, let's see, a and b are in our ground field k. So in other words, we want to describe t of v in this case. Well, let's notice that one of the components of T of V is V tensored with itself. So notice an arbitrary element from V tensored with itself has the following form. It has AX plus BY tensor CX plus DY. So like I said, that's an arbitrary element of V tensor V, given the fact that V is spanned by those two vectors X and Y. But now using these rules over here, we can decompose this quite a bit. So this is going to be A times C, and then X tensor X plus, let's see, B times C, Y tensor X, and then next we'll have A times D, X tensor Y, and finally B times D, Y tensor Y. So we'll have something like that. But now if we introduce a little bit of simplifying notation and write this as X tensor X as X squared, this Y tensor X is Y X, this X tensor Y is X Y, and then finally this as Y squared, we can rewrite this as AC x squared plus BCYx plus ADXY plus BDY squared. But that's actually all we can do. There is no simplification, and that's because built into the tensor product, there's no reason for this guy to be equal to this guy. In fact, they are not equal. So that means we don't have a polynomial algebra in this case. Because if we had a polynomial algebra, we would have to have commutativity among the variables. So this leads us to two kind of obvious questions. The first question would maybe be something like, well, if we don't have a polynomial algebra, what do we have? And the second question would be, is there a way to manipulate this so we do indeed have a polynomial algebra? And thus we can always construct a polynomial algebra out of the tensor algebra. And in fact, we can answer both of those questions. So maybe the first one goes like this. In this case, T of V is called the free associative algebra generated by X and Y. So we might write it like this. So this is KXY. So the product is associative, but when I say free, that means there's no relations between X and Y. So there's no commutativity there. So for in instance, XY is not the same thing as YX, but like x squared yx is not the same as any other combination of those either. So now how can we get to the other thing? But now taking this free associative algebra view of this tensor algebra gives us some motivation for creating the algebra of polynomials. And that goes like this. Let's say we take k xy, so that's the algebra of polynomials, let's notice that that will be the free algebra kxy mod some sort of appropriate ideal. And what's the ideal here? 
Well, it's pretty easy to see that it's the ideal generated by yx minus xy or xy minus yx. Let's recall that when we quotient by an ideal, we're really setting everything like this equal to zero or every multiple of stuff like this equal to zero. But setting this equal to zero is like setting xy equal to yx. But that's the only thing that we lacked here in order for this guy over here to be commutative. So that means we've introduced commutativity into the situation, giving us the commutative associative algebra that we want, the polynomial algebra. And that actually leads us to a nice definition that builds upon this tensor algebra, which we'll state on the next board. So motivated by what we saw on the last board, that pushes us towards the following definition. So given a vector space V over a field K, the symmetric algebra of V is defined as follows. So we'll call it sim v, sometimes just s v, and it'll be the tensor algebra modded out by the ideal that introduces commutativity. And that ideal looks like this. So it's going to be generated by all vectors v tensor w minus w tensor v as v and w range through all v. So we saw that worked on the last board for a two variable case. Now let's maybe look at the following observation, which prove which follows pretty easily and we won't prove. And that's if we have V is equal to the span of vectors X1 up to Xn. So in other words, it's an n-dimensional vector space. Although that being said, there's no reason that V should be finite dimensional. It could indeed be infinite dimensional. So then we have sim v is in fact equal to the polynomial algebra with these variables. Okay, so like I said, that follows pretty quickly from the definition and is a nice like abstract way of constructing the polynomial algebra. And you might say, well, why would you want this abstract way to construct the polynomial algebra or any other algebra? Well, it turns out that if you know the action of some sort of object on a vector space, which a lot of mathematical objects like groups or other algebras or so on and so forth have natural actions on vector spaces, then you can push that natural action on a vector space to, the nat to a natural action on polynomials via this symmetric algebra. So that ends up being a natural way of defining an action of a group or something else onto a polynomial ring. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we're going to look at another related definition. So looking at the definition of the symmetric algebra on the next last board, there's kind of an obvious change that we can make that gives us an additional structure. And that's given by the following definition of the exterior algebra. So starting with the same vector space over a field, the exterior algebra of V, which we'll define by this big wedge V, is equal to the tensor algebra mod v tensor w plus w tensor v. So that means that v tensor w is equal to negative w tensor v within the tensor algebra because that's setting this equal to zero. What we have here is not commutativity, but anti-commutativity. So let's look at maybe an example real quick. So if we've got V is equal to the span of just X, well, that means that the exterior algebra of V is in fact just equal to everything of the form A plus BX, where A and B come from K. In other words, it's only two dimensional. And you might say, well, why is that? I'm tensoring V with itself like a bunch of times. Well, that's because everything in V is a multiple of X. And whenever you tensor X with itself, you get zero. You tensor X with itself and get zero. That follows from this guy up here where you just set V and W both equal to X. Assuming you're in a field which is not characteristic too, but we won't worry about that. And then maybe written in our simplified notation, this means x squared is equal to zero. So you get that sort of algebra. This is actually related to something called the dual algebra, which I made some videos about. Now we can maybe look at another example. Let's say our other example would be um, v is the span of x and y. 
So in this case, the exterior algebra on V will be equal to maybe the space of two variable anti-commuting polynomials. Maybe the best way to write that is just this wedge X comma Y. That's kind of a standard way of writing like anti-commuting polynomials. But now notice here, there's only a certain dimension of this space as well. We could have constant polynomials. We could have linear in X, linear in Y, but we can't have X squared or Y squared, but we can have X, Y. So that's four dimensional. In fact, everything here is of the form A plus BX plus CY plus DXY where these A, B, C, and D come from our field K. Now you could push this further and further and further, and what you'll see is that the dimension of an invariable commuting polynomial ring is actually like two to the N. Um, maybe if you see how that goes, post it in the comments. Okay, so maybe I'll leave you guys right here with this exterior algebra. There's actually one more really important algebra to talk about related to this tensor algebra, and that's called the universal enveloping algebra. But in order to do that, we need to talk a little bit about Lie algebras. Now, if you guys want to see that video, maybe post in the comments, and that's a good place to stop.